Hello and welcome to the newspapers, The Week in Review. This is a show where we look at the week's national newspapers. My name is Mike Mendoza and each week I'm here at this time with a special guest to look in detail at the stories that are hitting the headlines in the nationals. Today I'm delighted to welcome back my guest reviewer, entrepreneur, businessman, Mike Holland. Mike's the founder and brains behind the British Engineering in Hove, which opens to the public in the next couple of years. Welcome back and thank you for returning. My pleasure. It wasn't that bad, was it? Really? You enjoyed it so much you came back again? Absolutely. This time we're going to look at the national newspapers. Last time you were here, we looked at the locals, of course. And uh, going straight into the Daily Mirror, that's my overchange. Uh, Iraq, the worst cover up of our time. Uh, Hero families fear at four year wait for inquiry to, re to reveal the truth on a disastrous war. Uh, as you go inside the paper, uh, what are they all so desperate to hide? Families fury, as I say, findings may be kept under wraps until after the next election. Uh, you may have some thoughts on that one as well. Well, I, I think it's all, all terribly sad. You know, people. Uh People do want to know what's happened to their loved ones, obviously, but it's a, it's a, it's a, difficult, to, it's a difficult one, isn't it? I, I mean, I feel just terribly sad that so many young, of our young people are being lost for what I see as um, a, bit of a, pointless, a bit of a pointless war, personally speaking. Okay, I mean, uh, Rod Little says in, uh, in The Sun, uh, we're as barbaric as our enemies. I think we've got to be as barbaric as our enemies, uh, and I can't see any, any way that's going to, uh, it's going to change. I mean, what are we going to do? Allow people who are blowing people up and maiming our young men and, uh, uh, and civilians? Are we, are we going to, um, what are we going to do, give them probation? <laughs> I, I, you know, wh 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 how, how else are they going to deal with it? I mean, they're pretty barbaric with us, aren't they? <laughs> well, let's say we're, we're as barbaric as our enemies, so... Uh, there's two ways of looking at this. There's, there's the way, I guess, uh, we're talking about torture, which, which is barbaric. We're talking about torture, but I mean, there are uh, an eye for an eye and all the rest of it, but um, it's a, an awful, awful situation. I, um, you know, we've taken out some of these dictators. We've taken out Saddam Hussein. You know, we've taken out Gaddafi. Um, we, you know, we, we, we've gone in and done this. Now we we put our feet in perhaps where we should never have done in the first place. I mean, the whole thing was, was over weapons of mass destruction. You know, they were never found. Uh, were, we, were we conned? They were never found. I think we were too hasty going in in the first place. Um, and, and I think in many cases we were wrong to go in, but now we are in, um, we're, we're stuck into it. And I don't think whether or not we're torturing people or whether they're torturing us is really the question. It's, it's a, a, the question is how do we end it? How do we get over this? Yeah. Well, but do you think this was about oil? Do I think it was about oil? I think in many cases it would be about oil. But um, I, I think we've all got carried away, hoisted by our own petard. We've been, uh, I, I wouldn't say that uh, people like Tony Blair were, were, were wrong. I just think we, we were hasty. We went in mm. and we did things that we should have thought more do you, about. Do you think he was misled by, by Bush and, and his advisers? Did uh, he go along too easily? I, I personally, I'm one of these people that actually think Tony Blair was a very, was a very good man. Uh, I think he, 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 did his, he did his best and uh, I think he may have been led in a bit too easily. Yeah. I think it's, a, it's, it's, it's tragic. The whole thing is tragic and I feel my, you know, my heart goes out to these, uh, these families. And it's the knock-on effect, of course, as well, the, yeah. the way families have suffered over the years uh, and even some troops coming back, having mm. seen atrocities that you'd never ever expect yeah. to see in, in your lifetime. And the knock-on effect, of course, is going to go a lot, f be knocked on a lot further, unfortunately. Yeah, OK. Uh, story two, have baby, bag, council house and spend your life on benefits. Uh, <laughs> this is a, a story about a website for scroungers that's been opened up. Uh, Josie Cunningham has launched a website encouraging girls to get pregnant and live on benefits, just like she does. Well, I mean, you know, follow, following the last story, this is just a, just a light-hearted nonsense, isn't it? And uh, there's a picture of the lady there. She's obviously looked at uh, breast enhancements by the looks of it. Um, it's the sort of thing that one would expect to see in, uh, in the sun, isn't it, really? <laughs> <laughs> right, all, very, all very interesting, but, but after but are the last one... there far too many people living on benefits at the moment? Uh, and is the government right, maybe, to be cutting down? I'm sure there are far too many people living on benefits, and I'm sure the government is right. Um, uh, whether, you know, whether this, I think, you know, commenting on this story though, whether this is a, se a serious story, I, I, you know, 
I, mm-hmm. I would say it's something I would rather dismiss. Yeah, as, as I said in the last programme, you know, it's a, it's very much a non-newsy time of the year, and I think you really got to scratch uh, yeah. everything you can scratch to get to get, to get into the papers. I would say that the, the the news on this is that the ladies had breast enhancement. That's about <laughs> it. <laughs> she should have been on page three then, really. It's the wrong okay. page, exactly. Yeah. Uh, another one. Uh, this is about the candy crass. It says uh, MP caught on game in Parliament sparks a probe into the Sun's pick. Uh, well, they're asking really. Uh, Commons bosses are, are, are trying to find out how this whole story got to the newspapers. But at the end of the day, did the guy do right or wrong? He claims he still asked the right questions uh, during a committee meeting. And I think a lot of people do look at their iPads and their, their iPhones and whatever they're looking at uh, during meetings. I mean, do you ever get distracted? I think distracted just for playing this silly game, hmm. <laughs> whether he was in the House you of Commons or not, obviously. I don't. I think uh, it's just... Once again, you know, it's, it's a nonsense. Uh, do we really want people like this representing us in Parliament? I don't think so. I think they're quite right. Get rid of him. <laughs> I'd, I'd, I'd get rid of him. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't be looking for an apology. I'd just say, right, you, you're gone. That's it. End of. We want serious people. You and serious people running the country. It's a serious business. OK, uh, one more story before our break. Uh, this, this, is, this is a very sad story. Uh, a student killed self over payday debt. A uh, story about a struggling student who killed himself after a, only a £100 payday loan spiralled to £800 debt in three months. Well, you don't even need to show me this. I'm, uh, I've, been, I've been banging on about this for, for ages. Uh, these people are, uh, who run these payday loan companies, in my view, are just parasites. Uh, living off the backs of, uh, of the poor and vulnerable. And, uh, you know, some of, the, some of the cases that I've heard about, you know, where they've been uh, s- taking money from drug dealers, uh, so not drug dealers, drug, drug addicts, um, are just, 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 just foul. The whole thing is foul. The, the, amount, of, uh, the amount of interest charged is, is obscene. And, you know, it's only just now that government is starting to talk about it and, and start questioning whether this is right. How can it possibly be right? Um, it should have been capped a long, long time ago. And then, of course, this student would not have killed himself over a payday debt. Well, just debt in general. A lot of people do sadly commit suicide because it does yeah. get too much for them. I mean, we are living in a, in, a, in a society, I suppose, where everyone does borrow money. Yes, but a great friend of mine uh, killed himself um, a few years ago and uh, he was basically running up debts on uh, credit cards and then he'd get another credit card and pay his debts off and build it up again and then another credit card and so on and so forth. And all, all, all these companies need to take into task over this. It's, it's ridiculous. You know, I was always taught if you can't afford it, don't have it. Yeah, that's easy to say, is it? Not easy to put in practice. Oh, I don't know. I grew up in a, in a council house with parents who didn't have any money, and uh, basically that's the ethos that, uh, that they had, and it, uh, it rubbed off on me. And basically that's the way you've got to try and encourage your, your offspring. And at this time of the year, I guess this is, this is really a warning to people who do take on massive debts over Christmas period. It is, but you know, it's, it's out there, isn't it? We see it, we see it uh, advertised, thrown in our faces all the time. Um, uh, offering, offering these ridiculous loans, you know, a thousand pounds, music comes on and it's all made to look glamorous and wonderful and, uh, you know, uh, pe- people go along and uh, it's all too easy to get. It's just so wrong. Well, will we actually see uh, government sort of clamping down on debt in general? I know they're saying now they're talking about uh, interest rates to be reduced. Yes, but they're saying that, um, isn't it, uh, that you can't charge more than double well, you know, double is it's too a double much. a week as opposed to double a year. <laughs> double what? Yeah, exactly. Um, how are they really seriously regulating it? it? It should be, you know, if you want to borrow money, there should be a really good reason for it, and it should be well thought through. And if the banks say no, hey, basically, you shouldn't be having it. Okay. Uh, I'd like to move on to another story uh, very quickly. Uh, Britain would vote to quit the EU, uh, says a new poll. Uh, this, this is an interesting one. It actually comes from the Express. Uh, Britain would vote to leave the EU if an in-out referendum was held today, uh, according to a new survey. The poll showed that dramatically more voters would opt to leave than those who wish to remain. 46.6% would vote out, while just 34.3% would vote in, and nearly 20% were undecided. Mm. That just goes to prove to me that Nigel Farage has been right all along with his uh, assessment of how the 
British voters feel. Okay, but uh, I mean, I'm not going to ask you how you're going to vote because it's probably not the right thing to do. Um, but David Cameron says, "Give us time." He's talking about 2017. Uh, is this time to, for him to try and wheel out of, of getting into into anything or out of anything? Uh, I think uh, David Cameron's misjudged the uh, the voters here. He's misjudged the general public. He doesn't. He, he never thought that it would come to this. But uh, I think there's a real strength of feeling now that we should be getting out of Europe. I mean, it's a great place to to visit. <laughs> as far as I'm concerned, but we don't want to be tied as closely as we are to them. OK, we're going to be back after the break. Don't go away. This is The Week in Review. My guest is Mike Holland. We'll be back after the break. Don't go away. Back to the newspapers and the week in review with me, Mike Mendoza, and my guest, the returning Mike Holland. Uh, Mike, we were talking before the break there about Britain would vote to quit the EU, uh, according to a new poll, and some pretty shocking figures there, uh, which, which might be, as you said, an eye opener for, for David Cameron. But also interesting here, the research uh, will make grim reading for Labour leader Ed Miliband, who's refused to, to support David Cameron's plan for an in out referendum in 2017. The findings will put further pressure on Labour to give people a say on the UK's relationship with Europe for the first time since the 1975 referendum. Can, can you see Labour making a U-turn on this? Um, I think they make so many U-turns, it uh, wouldn't be surprising at all, would it? But um, I don't know, he's made his, he, he's made his position pr pretty clear. I think as far as Miliband's concerned, there'd be no chance of us um, coming out of the EU. But uh, do we really believe that um, David Cameron will take us out? I'd, I'm not sure. I, I, don't, I don't believe anything anymore. I, 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 for, for me, the strength of, seeing the strength of opinion um, that seems to support Nigel Farage, who's come from nowhere, just makes you realise how little confidence the general public have in either the Conservatives or Labour. Yeah, this is why people are now looking for alternatives. Yeah. That could be the rise, of course, of the Greens as well. Uh, really? <laughs> well, it, happened, it did happen in Brighton. Of yeah, it happened in Brighton. Uh, if it happened in Brighton, anything can happen in Brighton. OK, let's move on to another story. Most extreme weather in 100 years will sweep the UK. Are we really prepared for the weather that we're being promised? We, we've had pretty awful weather the last couple of years in, in wintertime. We saw some tremendous storms earlier this year, uh, sort of late Christmas last year, of course. We started with the bad weather. We know what to expect. Are we prepared for it? Well, we've always had weather, haven't we? I mean, this is, now we get graphics on the, um, on the weather forecast. We get graphics showing um, uh, weather banks. But we've always had weather. But weather banks have only just been in, invented this year. So weather, perhaps this is a weather bank that's going to um, be worse than any of the other weather that we've had in the other years. I don't know. I, I, I'm a bit sceptical about all this. Of course, we've got global warming, and anybody who's, who denies that... Uh, Global warming exists is, is I think, you know, barking mad. But uh, whether it's uh, this is just another piece of news or not, I'm, I'm not too sure. They've had pretty extreme weather in the States, and of course that's heading over here, I'm sure. But um, I think we're just going to have to wait and see on that one. A, I, new I, a new expression over the last few days, of course, weather bomb. We've never oh, weather heard bomb, of weather bomb it? before, weather, weather we? bomb. It was not yeah. weather bank. Weather bomb. That's mm. it. Weather bomb. So we've got a weather bomb hitting us. Yeah. Have we ever had weather bombs before? I don't remember a weather bomb ever being discussed before. And whether we're ready for it, uh, are we ever ready for it? <laughs> are we ever ready for it in the UK? It's a little bit of well, slow and everybody comes surprise, to a standstill. Yeah. 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 Uh, I mean... I, I know for West Sussex, for example, uh, so many millions of pounds have been set aside now, have been promised for sea defences because they know they're going to get this, this sea surge uh, coming in yet again. But this money's not due for another two years. What happens over the next two years? If the money is going to be there, why can't they have it now? Mm. Well, uh, there's, there's always a shortage, isn't there? There's always going to be a shortage of money in, in what, for whatever is, whatever is asked for. So uh, that comes as no surprise to me. Yeah, yeah. I mean, it, it's funny, isn't it? I mean, you get the budget, for example, and they're, they're budgeting for so many years ahead. And possibly the, 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 uh, the, the party that's in power at the time won't be in power when, when these uh, ideas come out. Well, that's it. They're just fobbing it off on the next lot. 
<laughs> okay, uh, the headlines uh, in the sun, sorry about going back to the sun again. Uh, as oil prices plunge, we demand fuel cut to 115p. Uh, down in the pumps is the, is the headline. Uh, the sun demands greedy fuel giants to slash their petrol prices to 115p a litre. Uh, world oil prices have actually plunged 25% since November, uh, but the pump uh, price for petrol has fallen by just 3% to an average of 120 Mm. I remember when we used to pay, what, 30-odd P for a gallon of petrol one time. Yes, yes, it's a... Uh, you've always got to save up for it now, haven't you? But, uh, <laughs> but you know, why, why should we, we be paying this, this sort of money? And as I say, the, the, uh, the, the pressure has to be on the, some, some of these garages that are charging a lot of money. You can go to Tesco's, you can go to, to Asda, and they're always charging a lot less than anybody else. Yes, um, but greedy, greedy petrol companies, really? <laughs> I, I don't. I don't know. Um, I, st I still think that people do. Somebody who um, is is not particularly um, anti-car, but I still think um, people uh, do make unnecessary journeys. Um, and I think until we bring in things like road tolls, I think that will continue. Personally, if, uh, the one thing I do agree with, one of the main things I agree with in Europe is that uh, there are roads that you can actually travel on because you've got you've got you pay a toll. Uh, but it does make you think before you travel, before you decide that you're going to go and work in another town, for instance, rather than taking a job in your own town. You take into account the, the cost of the road tolls. And, uh, and that's fuel. Something, and, and fuel. And that's mm. something that isn't, isn't quite the same here. So I think, personally, I do think there is a fair bit of fuel wasted. Well, uh, if they did of, reduce the cost of fuel, yeah. uh, will this all take people's mind off the idea, oh, yeah, we're, we're trying to save the earth here? I, th I think I I if they reduce the cost of fuel, it's because they should be reducing the cost of fuel, but I think it doesn't mean to say that we shouldn't have charges elsewhere to raise money for. There was a proposal a few years ago, of course, of, of literally as soon as you get in your car, you're metered and, and you have to pay for every sort of inch that you drive. Well, that's a, just a nanny state, isn't it? That's a, I, I, I wouldn't go Spies. that far. Spies. Spies. We have, we, have, we have enough of that as it is. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Uh, the, the next one, I was going to say earlier, by the way, that it's a very non-newsy time of the year, yeah. so we've we got to go to this one. Uh, the headline, Silly Ruggers. Uh, why, why, why? Uh, why Delilah faces the Wales ban? Killjoy says it's violent. Uh, and uh, it's a ballad is, is a rugby anthem now, certainly for, for, well, for Wales. But apparently, why, why, why Delilah, the Tom Jones song, is apparently anti-women. Really? Well, I didn't know that. No, I didn't know that. Who, who, who came up with that idea? <laughs> the, the campaigners oh, strike oh, again. This is the sun again. Yeah, ah, right. Yes, the campaigners. Well, I mean, I'm sure. How many people are there campaigning against that? Is it, is it, uh, is it one person? I've <laughs> got... <laughs> 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 um, I, I, like, I like Tom Jones, and I think uh, that uh, anything that Tom Jones sang should be, uh, should be lauded not, and applauded, not, uh, not banned. Okay, so you don't see that as a violent song. Uh, I don't. As soon as you I've heard that song, you were now I've never thought that. about it as a violent song. Yeah, <laughs> it certainly wouldn't make me feel violent. Very strange. Yeah. Okay, let's move on to another story. Net closing on dark web filth. Uh, new technology spooks and Google in kids' sex war. Uh, this is groundbreaking technology to wipe vile images of child abuse from the internet forever. Will be unveiled today by David Cameron. Well, I've got my own views on this. I mean, I think take all porn off the net, take the whole lot off. I mean, just why do we need it? Why do we need porn? Why do we, you know? Uh, <laughs> it's big business. It's big business. Big business for who? For pornographers. For pornographers, exactly. I mean, <laughs> do we really need any of it? Can we not just say ban the lot? If it's, if it's, if it's causing a problem, which it must be, because yeah. anybody can access it. Uh, any child can access it. It's 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 a nonsense. We don't need that in our in our society. Just get rid of it totally. Then nobody will be tempted to go on and do anything. It just won't happen. I mean, there, there are some countries where you you can't see pornography at all. No. Um, I'm, I'm pretty sure in, in Turkey, uh, most Muslim countries. Yeah. I don't know how they do it, but they can actually stop any pornography yeah, yeah. being seen in, in their areas. Yeah. You know, I'm not doing a Mary Whitehouse. It's, uh, <laughs> it's just something that if, it, if it's causing this much of a problem, mm. just stop it, completely stop it. Yeah. The technology is already there. Yeah. So, so why don't they use it, I wonder? Well, I, I, I don't know. I don't know. Do, do, do you think maybe some people feel that there is a level of pornography that people should be able to watch? Well, what is that level? Um, 
I don't, I don't know, where do, you, where, do you, where, do you draw the, where do you draw the line? If it's causing a problem and they're, they're struggling to close some of these sites down, close the lot. We're not going to suddenly come to a grinding halt. You and I are still going to be sitting here. As the, <laughs> everything's going to exist except for the pornography. But this is not creating any state. Maybe, but I think you've got to draw the line somewhere, haven't you? Yeah, if you're you, against any states. I'm against any states, but I'm not against human decency. Yeah, fine, okay. Um, this is a very decent story coming up now. This is uh, Millie's Honours Afghan Heroes. Uh, this again is the Sun, uh, who have given awards to our troops. Uh, not enough people are honouring our troops, are they, really? That's right. They're, 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 and I know you're very not. much in favour of this. I'm very much in favour of it. I'm not particularly in favour of them going in the first place because I don't like to see our young men uh, uh, killed and maimed as they are, uh, in what I would say to be some of the time is needlessly. Um, but um, yeah, we should be saluting them. If we're going to send them out there, we're going to send our young men out there and they're doing a very, very tough job um, for, for their country. Of course we should be saluting them and of course we should be giving them some sort of an award. There was actually a very good story on, on television during the week uh, about uh, Prince Harry's 30th birthday and what he's done with troops uh, over, the, mm. over the last couple of years. Mm. I mean, he's almost a hero himself, isn't he, really? Prince Harry is my favourite royal. I think he's uh, uh, amazing. He's come really come into his own. Yeah. Uh, he's a fantastic chap. Excellent. Uh, you won't believe this. We're actually running out of time oh, yet again. It's a shame. Um, my great thanks to Mike Holland for joining me today. We hope to see you back here very, very soon. I'm back next time for another edition of The Nationals and The Weekend Review here on Latest TV with another special guest reviewer. Next week, I'm joined by UKIP's West Sussex leader, Mike Lennon. Bye for now. Thanks for your company.